Hello and welcome in to another edition of the Tech in 10 postgame show from the Ruston Daily Leader. I am sports reporter Matt Bellinson coming to you after Louisiana Tech's 28 to 14 loss to the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Uh, I want to thank the Northern Louisiana Medical Center for sponsoring Tech in 10 this season. Uh, it's been a lot of fun doing these and uh, it's more to come for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, overall thoughts, I'm, I think my biggest overall takeaway, I'm just going to get right out of the way, which, you know, it may seem like not that big of a deal and may seem like, okay, he's not even going to really an- analyze this game, but um, it's true. Sonny Cumbie said it the moment he, you know, stepped to the podium um, and, you know, answered questions, you know, post game in Lincoln. I wasn't there, obviously, but, um, you know, listened back, obviously, afterward. Um, he said, we entered the day one and on conference play um, and we end the day one and on conference play. That, that was my big takeaway. You know, I think going into this game, you know, Hank Bachmeyer's health was questionable. And I personally had, you know, said on Twitter and some other platforms that I personally wouldn't have started him, you know, whether he was healthy or not. Um, I just felt like there was more to lose than to gain in this one, um, just because obviously you have bigger goals in the conference and, and want to go compete for a conference title. And so, um, you know, Jack Turner got the start today. Um, so that was one avenue where I was like, okay, you know what, Nebraska's kind of already got an advantage. Jack making his first career start in front of, you know, close to 90,000 people and, you know, Memorial Stadium in Nebraska. So, um, you know, I thought he played well. We'll get to him in a minute. But just my big, big takeaway was I don't think the outcome is too surprising. You know, Nebraska, more physical team, you know, more talent. And I just think, you know, frankly, going into this one, I don't know how many Louisiana Tech fans were thinking, okay, if we don't win this one, then the season's over. Um, clearly, I think most fans recognized um, that this, you know, was just an opportunity for Louisiana Tech to, you know, try out some things. Obviously, you know, try and compete, you know, with Nebraska. I'm trying to come out with a win, but I think in, in the end, I think the outcome isn't too surprising. Um, and like I, and like Sonny Cumbie mentioned, and I would tend to agree, um, the conference is still, you know, in, in play. Um, obviously, you go on the road next week to UTEP to open, open Conference USA play, um, and that's where things get real. You know, now that you're done with non-conference play, you're two and three. Again, I, you know, I mentioned on the radio that I was on a couple nights ago, I think looking at the record right now, you know, it's obviously not great. You're two and three, just under 500. But I think it's it's pretty realistic when you look at the schedule. You know, when I went through and picked, you know, my predictions video, I did have North Texas, you know, as a win originally for Louisiana Tech. Um, but if you might recall, you know, it was a toss up game for me. You know, at the time, I obviously didn't know North, North Texas was going to be what it was. But, um, you know, I think losing to Nebraska, losing to North Texas, losing to SMU, it's not out of the realm of possibility when you looked at the schedule in the preseason. Um, and so I think if you're Louisiana Tech, you know, certainly you would like to be, you know, three and two and, you know, even maybe four and one. Um, but certainly I think two and three is realistic. And again, the overall record does not matter when compared to the conference record, which is one and oh when you started the year with the win over FIU. So um, I think in general, Louisiana Tech is still in a pretty good place. Uh, I thought I saw some pretty good things. Um, you know, again, I, you know, how much you can take away from it, we'll see. But uh, and you'll see who starts at quarterback next week as well against UTEP. But um, I think in general, my biggest takeaway was Louisiana Tech still a lot in front of Louisiana Tech. Conference play is on the horizon, and uh, yeah, there's there's more to be done. Um, that being said, specifically for this Nebraska game, um, I thought my two overall takeaways, obviously, again going back to quarterback, you know, Jack Tur- Jack Turner making his first career start in Lincoln for an injured Hank Bachmeyer. Um, I thought I thought Jack played pretty well. You know, obviously, again, just for the record, you know, I, I was at Grambling um, for for most of the day covering their game since they were here in town. Um, but I had, I had Louisiana tech up on my laptop. I was checking in periodically. I was following the scores and things like that. Um, and from what I was watching, it looked like Jack had a pretty good command of the offense. Um, you know, certainly Louisiana tech knew coming into this one, that running the ball was going to be a struggle against this Nebraska defensive line. And, you know, they barely finished, you know, above 45 yards rushing total Louisiana tech did on the day. So, um, it was pretty clear that the passing, uh, you know, offense was going to be the only way that Louisiana tech was going to stay in this one. And I thought Jack did pretty well. You know, when you look at his final numbers here, 27 of 42, 292 yards, a touchdown and an interception. You know, that that's not that's not bad. And when you consider, again, Nebraska had a really good defensive line, really good defensive front coming into this one, put a lot of pressure on quarterbacks um, and did a good job of keeping things in front. Um, but I thought Jack, you know, for the most part, one thing that I was asking this passing offense to finally do Stretch the field a little bit. Get the ball to your playmakers and let them kind of create and kind of get out and, you know, let them cook. 
Um, you know, Cyrus Allen, six catches for 102 yards and a touchdown. You know, that's the explosive element that we were kind of missing, you know, from Cyrus. You know, when you compare his kind of breakout freshman year last season, uh, there were times this year where it was like, okay, Cyrus, like, where's kind of that explosive ability? You know, obviously he battled through an early injury, but, you know, he came into today with, you know, you know obviously zero touchdowns and, uh, you know, came in under, you know, 150 yards total. So, um, you know, for Cyrus, a big day for him. And I think if you're Louisiana Tech, that's encouraging. You know, whether, again, it's Jack or someone else next week, uh, I think you have to be really encouraged to say, you know what, Cyrus, maybe be back to form. Let's get him the ball downfield a little bit more. Let's try and stretch this offense. Let's try and get that air raid system going where people have to defend the whole field, not just, you know, kind of these middle of the field underneath routes. Um, that was really encouraging for me. And, again, I think Jack played pretty well. You know, obviously there were some throws that, uh, you know, obviously for his career start, clearly some jitters I think he wished, you know, he'd had back. Um, but o- overall, I thought he played pretty well. Um, it's going to be really interesting to, you know, to see where the quarterback situation lies with Louisiana Tech. My money would be that Hank is still going to be your starter long term. He's going to be your starter, you know, next week against UTEP. Um, however, you know, I th- again, I thought Jack played pretty well. So it- it'll be interesting for Sonny Cumbie to confirm, you know, whether or not Hank is officially the starter um, going forward, you know, when we talked to, you know, Co- Coach Cumbie on Tuesday. Um, but in general, I thought Hank, you know, Jack, I should say, um, you know, played pretty well, you know, just kind of thrown into a situation, you know, that a lot of starting quarterbacks wouldn't like to be thrown into for their first career start. And again, I thought he looked okay. So um, I think that's really encouraging because obviously Hank has been hit a lot this year. This offensive line and pass protection has not proven to be, you know, a real strength. That being said today, you know, didn't get, didn't allow a sack. Um, you know, which is pretty surprising just considering how good this Nebraska defensive front was. Um, so I think in general, you know, it was it was pretty good just to see, I think, the passing game and the pass protection finally have a game that I think you can say there's stuff to build off here. Now, again, you know, you're going to UTEP next week, a team that you did score 41 points on last year and did win against. And so it'll be interesting to see, you know, if some of the, the success that was had here against Nebraska can carry over. Um, you know, whether it's Jack or it's Hank next week. I think another element that needs to be addressed, again, it's the run defense. I mean, 312 yards for Nebraska on the ground, 6.5 yards per carry. Um, Again, it's been the talk since the North Texas game, and and in spurts before that too, the run defense for this team is not at a competitive level right now. Now, I knew coming into this game, and a lot of, you know, Bulldog fans should have known as well, that Nebraska had one of the better running, you know, attacks in this conference as well. You know, Matt Rule said before the game, we're not going to apologize for how we play. We're going to grind teams out. We're going to run the ball at you, and we're going to make you stop us. Um, And Louisiana Tech did not, you know, whether it was Anthony Grant, you know, or Heinrich Harburg, um, you know, both guys, you know, finished with over 130 yards rushing and a touchdown on the ground. Um, You know, Heinrich obviously did some damage to the passing game as well. So, um, again, Louisiana Tech, you know, six and a half yards per carry. I mean, that's just not going to get it done. Um, you know, again, you face a UTEP team that you beat last year who didn't even finish, you know, over 200 yards rushing against you. Plays kind of a similar style in terms of the 11, 12, 13 personnel um, that Nebraska likes to show. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see if UTEP can say, hey, look at this film here. You know, UT- you know uh, Louisiana Tech is vulnerable in the run game. We can, we can exploit some things. And clearly over the past three weeks, Louisiana Tech has shown that it can't stop the run. So I'd be surprised if UTEP doesn't come out in, on his first couple of drives and just run it right at Louisiana Tech and say, you know what, let's see if you've improved. Let's see if you can stop the run for once. Um, so in general, that that's still a concern for me. Again, you know, going up against Nebraska, you know, 312 yards. Again, that and alone against Nebraska is not a problem. It's the consecutive games and the similar feeling of is this unit improving? Is there is there any sign of life that it can you know plug up these holes, fill gaps, and tackle? Um, I think that's the biggest concern right now for this running you know defense um, that it's just not stopping anyone. You know whether it be Nebraska, or North Texas, and SMU at times, you know Northwestern State at times as well. So um, I think in general the, the defense has played okay. It's just the run defense that is just allowing you know, offenses, opposing offenses to continue drives. And again, Nebraska was three of 11 on third down today. So it's not like they were just carving up Louisiana Tech like North Texas was. Um, But again, it just has to improve. You know, that defensive line and the linebackers were brought in here to make a difference and to and to shore up those, you know, deficiencies that caused this group so much trouble last year. So far, you know, I haven't seen that. So I think if you're Louisiana Tech, again, Nebraska, I think you'll take giving up some chunk plays, but, you know, back-to-back games with over 300 yards on the ground, 
you, you can't win like that. You know, whether you're 1-0 in conference play or not, you're not going to be 1-0 for loan if you keep playing like that. So um, I think in general, Louisiana Tech losing to Nebraska, it's not the craziest outcome in the world. You know, Louisiana Tech did, I mean, it was 7-7 at the half, so it's not like Louisiana Tech was blown out by any means. Um, it got away from them at the end there, you know, in the fourth quarter. But um, in general, you know, I think Jack Turner showed some flashes. Again, whether he starts or not, we'll see. The run defense has to improve. I will say one bright spot on the defense that I would like to shout out uh, is, is Brevin Randall. Brevin Randall, I should say, um, you know, a transfer that came into Louisiana Tech in the offseason. Um, you know, I think he's just, he's just done a really good job, you know, coming over from Stephen F. Austin, kind of familiar with Scott Powers' defense, obviously. Um, and he's just been really solid just getting, you know, behind the line. And I think, you know, when you look at his numbers here for his last three games, four and a half tackles for loss. 23 total tackles. I mean, that's pretty solid from a linebacker. So you, you'll take that. Um, and I think if you're Louisiana Tech, again, with this run defense being what it is, you know, with guys getting to the second level, I think you're just you're going to need to rely on guys like Jez Lord Botain, you know, Brevin Randall, and obviously Hugh Davis as well, you know, to shore up some of these deficiencies. And so um, I just wanted to shout him out as, as one guy that, again, the defense is struggling, stopping the run. You know, but when they're getting to Brevin Randall, you know, things are, are shutting down right now. So um, that's one guy that I think is, is on the rise and has continued to play well over the last couple of weeks. So we'll see if conference play begins and if he can continue that streak as well. So, um, again, Louisiana Tech loses, you know, 28-14 in Nebraska. Still 1-0 in conference play. I think that's the biggest takeaway from today. Um, and Louisiana Tech, again, will travel to UTEP next Friday, Friday night game, to start conference play. Uh, for the Bulldogs. So uh, for the Rustin Data Leader, I am Matt Bellinson. Thank you for listening to this edition of Tech in 10 and have a good one.